Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? All right, I'm trying this new setup here, see if it's uh, gonna work. Can you all hear me? Let me bring up the chat. Can you, yes, okay, awesome, thank you. So if I wanna chat with you, I'm gonna have to look this way. Uh, can you see, can you see my, my video? Can you see me on the, on the screen? Because I have two monitors now, so I just wanna make sure that uh, you see my face so I can, all right, awesome. So whenever I, I speak to you, I'll look at this camera and whenever I'm gonna code, I'm gonna point back to here, okay? All right. All right, so let's see, let me share my screen. Uh, hmm, which screen do I wanna share? I guess this one, this one too. Right, can you see the screen? Let me bring up the, uh, where I can see the chat. Yeah, participants, maybe this here and the chat is right here. Okay, so I put the chat open right here. Okay. All right, excellent. Um, let me bring up the canvas. Let's see where we are. Okay. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah. So we we're still playing around with uh, Redux, and uh, so we we built um, a, a couple components that uh, need to work together. And, and that are going to together going to build the course editor, right? Remember, we have uh, a course list uh, that uh, we are rendering either as a table or as a grid. And then you can select that uh, course and navigate that to the course editor, which you can then um, edit that course, right? And so last time we we uh, worked on um, on two components: the 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 module lists, right, and the um, uh, and the lessons. Uh, tabs at the top, right? Uh, uh, but we need to be able to, well, first of all, connect it to the database, right, to the server. Uh, so we need to create a service. We need to fetch all this data uh, from the service, right? And any any um, modifications we make to the current list, uh, we need to make them to the to the server. We also need to be able to connect the selected course so that we display the modules for that course, right? So we need to create that one-to-many relationship. Uh, between the selected course and the and the modules that go with that course, okay, and that's an entirely new API that uh, we're introducing this time around. Uh, the the ones we've uh, looked at before uh, only showed being able to manipulate a list of items, right? So that you can add add to the items, remove from the items, and there were standalone list of things, right? But this time around, uh, those items live inside of a context, right? So you're not just loading any any uh, you know, just all the modules, right, or all the lessons, but they would be for specific contexts, right? So we need to make that connection as well. Uh, also, we need to understand, well, how is it that we're going to create that relationship, right? How is it that the, we're going to know what, which modules to load, right? Uh, we, we, presumably, we're going to use the, the course ID, right? Uh, it's kind of like a foreign key uh, that force that connection. So let's let's focus on, on on creating that that communication between, you know, which which modules to load for which course that is selected, right? And once we learn how to do that connection, right, we need to also learn how to make the connection between the the modules and the the lessons, right? So that you you only load the lessons for the module that you select, right? So so we need to learn how to create this one to many relationship, okay? Uh, so yeah, so let's um. Oh, yeah, so that's that's going to be the focus of uh, of this uh, of this week, right? You know, we're we're, we're start, we are we're playing around with the Redux assignment, and I'm going to try to get you as far as I as I can, um, you know, actually, without actually doing the, the assignment for you. Um, so we'll, we'll get you going as far as we can with the modules. Uh, we're going to get you maybe halfway through the lessons, right? And then we're going to let you 
go on and complete on your own the the topics, right? You know, having having to take a look at how we addressed the modules and the, the lessons, then you can go and you have hopefully you have the, enough confidence to go on and, and work on the topics all by yourself. Okay. Uh, before we, we, we do that, we let's um, let's review a couple of um, uh, administrative uh, things here. Let's see the um, let's open up the the syllabus and see where we are. Uh, let's see. Make sure I have the, the chat here open. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's uh, make this a little bigger. Let's see. So we are in week number six over here. All right. We're doing uh, reducers. We you know we're maintaining the state on the client using Redux. We um, uh, we talk about reducer stores, providers, and dispatchers and mappers. Uh, so we'll keep doing that uh, for 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 today, and perhaps uh, till uh, it might spill over till to Wednesday as well. And we'll see how we we're, we're doing. Uh, we might get started on um, on RESTful APIs, creating some of some of those APIs. Right now, you're using my API, right? You're using a server that I'm providing for you. Uh, and and you're interacting with it using a RESTful API, right? The the um, uh, some some of the the, the 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 structure of the URL that you're using is following a specific pattern, right? And and so we want to learn how to do that you know, so that you can have your own server, right? Create your own APIs, and so that that's what we're gonna uh, perhaps we'll get started on Monday, or if not, they'll spill over to I'm sorry, uh, this Wednesday, or maybe they will spill over a little later. Uh, but next week, right, uh, week uh, number eight, uh, it'll be the exam, right, the, the midterm exam. Uh, so, so on Monday, we'll, we'll review. I'll, I'll give you some sample ex uh, questions so that you, you, you know what, more or less what to expect. Oh, it's mostly what you've seen so far in the quizzes, right? Uh, a lot of them will be fill in the blanks, uh, multiple choice, uh, like, like uh, some, some uh, puzzles that, that you need to complete. And so more, more of that, right? But the, the exam will be made available next Wednesday. So a week from this Wednesday. And it'll be, be available for 72 hours, right? So you'll, you'll get to choose when you wanna take the exam. Uh, it'll probably be around three hours, uh, about 40 questions. And it's open book. And uh, the, the material that uh, will go for it will be all the way up to Redux, right? No restful services, right? All the way up to Redux. Uh, so the material that we'll complete maybe on Wednesday. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Yeah. So we'll review everything before before the exam on Wednesday. We'll we'll review on, on Monday, right? Any any questions you might have, uh, I'll, I'll I'll give you some questions and uh, uh, sample questions, and then you can come back uh, on Monday. You know, if you have any questions, we can go over some of those questions and, and you know finalize pre prepare for the for the exam on Wednesday. Um, I think that's it. Any uh, any questions before we get started? All right. If, uh, if no questions, then I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up the um, the 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 code that we've been playing around with. Right. We um, let's see. This is uh, uh, this is React section one. Right, 2000, you know, spring, spring 21. Okay, so it must be this one. So let me bring that over. Okay, I think this is where we left off, left off last time around. Let me run the, uh, let me run this code and so we can see where we are. Okay. All right, so we're, we're, we're here. Let me make this a little bigger. Uh, if we click on grid, right, and then we click on a, on a specific course, it navigates to the, uh, to the course editor, right? And so we've built, um, we built this, uh, we created a reducer for this, right? We created a uh, event handlers in that reducer. We created a couple mappers. We, um, we also, are, I believe we're handling 
adding new modules. I believe we added also being able to edit uh, modules. Uh, and uh, I don't know, did we do it for, for TAMS? No, I don't remember. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't finish that. We did not finish that. All right, so before we before we get to that, right, before we get go any further, right, I I would like to uh, take a look at uh, how is it that we can we can um, uh, uh, hook up the the uh, the manager right when we when we navigate uh, and we when we navigate here, right? How is it that we load the modules that are specific to this to this course, right? Somehow we need to be able to encode and let the uh, the course I don't know. Right, that that we want the, uh, the the modules for a specific course, right? So how do we do that? Okay, so 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 how do we have this right? These course manager, right? Communicate with this course editor and let them know that we want a specific a specific uh, course, right? I mean, we we could we could store it some somewhere where they both share share, share this information, right? We could. Uh, perhaps put it inside of the course manager. I believe the course manager is parent to all of these, right? Is parent to the to the course table. Is also parent to this course editor, right? So one strategy might be to create some variable that is shared amongst these two, and then share the state variable with both of them, right? As long as I can I can manipulate and set the state variable at the parent level, right? They can both see which one is a selected course, right? Uh, but I would like to discourage you from that. The the um, anything you put in the state, right? You have to be careful that uh, that that it could not perhaps it could not survive a refresh, right? So so say say I I, I set a variable, I set a state variable uh, when I when I click on here, I could do that. I could set a, a a state variable, and then when I navigate here, I could load that state variable and and see that it's a specific course that you've selected. Right, and the problem with that is that what ha what happens if I refresh the screen? Right, if I refresh, what happens to that variable? It's gone. Right, this this uh, it will it would not survive a refresh. Right, it would also not survive navigation. Right, um, uh, so so that's not a good idea. Right, so so instead we need to encode it somewhere where we are sure that even if you refresh the screen, um, I would still see it. Right, so what we're going to do is a it's a user te technique that is called URL encoding. Right? URL encoding means that we're going to encode the state of the application. Right? Anything that we want to be able to survive a refresh, right? we're gonna encode it as part of the URL. Right? We're gonna put enough information here, maybe you know, some, some ID right? that if I, if I refresh, notice that the, that, that ID is stay, stays in that URL, see that? Right? So this could be a parameter Right, that I can I can navigate to a page right, and I'm, I could pass that in, information encoded in the URL right and that's a very good practice right that's a good practice to do that do, do we want to encode enough information in the URL so that we could survive a refresh it also would allow you to you know select that URL copy it and then send it off to somebody an email or text it to somebody right and they could click on that and and they could see exactly what you what you saw right because remember all our code right all our pages are dynamically generated right all all this information is part of some javascript that has some arrays here on the browser right? if you can't guarantee that you have enough information to recreate this right then you're going to you're going to lose it, that that content right uh, same, same same thing um, you know these big Amazon, right? All those permanently generated, right? So, so how that they they uh, they know? For instance, if I if I copy the URL for an Amazon uh, product that I'm looking at, right? None of those pages are static, right? They're all dynamically generated. So, so how is it that if I if I you know, I send you the URL, right? How how would it how would you know when you receive the email uh, the state that I was in when I navigated and I searched for certain products, right? And I clicked on a specific product. Right, and, and I'm I'm changing the state of my local of my local application. Right, if I send you a URL, your browser would never know anything about the state of where I was in my browser. So we need to encode uh, enough information in the URL so that when you click on it, right, you can recreate exactly what I'm seeing. Right, so 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 that's that's what we mean by encoding 
uh, encoding enough state in the URL to be able to recreate this, right? So we're going to use this, this technique uh, to first, we're going to encode, you know, to know which modules, to know which modules we need to render, we need to know the, 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 uh, the course, right? We need to know the ID for the course. And when we click and so, oops, sorry, because I love the specific last module, again, right? If I, if I don't encode enough information in the URL, right? And I select a particular module, how would it, how would it know if I, if I refresh the screen, how would it know that a particular module was selected? I need to be able to encode also the module, right? And the lesson, anything that I need to put in there that I can you know, refresh the screen and be able to, to uh, recreate my, my content, okay? All right, so, so I'll show you how to, how to do it for going from course to modules. And, and then I'll show you how to go from modules to lessons, right? Because they are slightly different. Right? In one case, in one case, we're going from one component, an entire component, we are going to navigate to an entirely different component. You see that, right? It's kind of like navigating from one screen to another screen. And right? so, so the technique of doing that is slightly different from if I click on select a module and I, and I want to display the lessons, right? The content changes in the page, yes? But I am in the same screen, right? So, so in one case, I'm navigating from one screen to the other screen, whereas uh, you know, if I select a course, if I select a course, right? I navigate to another screen and I want to show the modules for that course. And I'm, I'm swapping screens. Whereas in the case where I'm clicking on the modules, I want to stay in the same screen. I want to stay in the same screen, but the content changes, the content changes, right? So if I select different modules, right, different lessons load, but it's the same screen. So the, the, the techniques are slightly different. They both rely on, on encoding state in the URL, right? But they're slightly different. One changes from one component to the next, whereas the other one stays in the same component. So let's first look at going from one component to the next, right? So let's, let's uh, we're here, right? And if I click here, I navigate to the editor, right? Okay, so let's, uh, let's, uh, let's do that. So where is it that we encode that information? Okay, so let's see, we, we had, uh, I believe we had done this in the, uh, let's see, course editor in the course manager in the course manager, we had created all these routes, right? One of them that um, allowed us to go to the course table, right? Uh, or the grid, right? And um, where did I put the, uh, where did I put the editor? Uh, did I put it in app.js? Oh, here we go. Yeah, so we had put the, the editor here, okay? Um, Yours might be slightly different, right? Of where do, do, does it actually end up? Um, but what we want to be able to do, right? If uh, is uh, I should not be able to navigate. Notice that it would make no sense for me to navigate to the editor without the course, right? Because what modules am I going to show you? Right? I don't know. If I if I don't know the course, what modules would I show you? Right now, I'm just displaying some some uh, uh, static content, right? In the reducer, right? Uh, so so. So this, this mapping over here makes no sense, right? Because you know, why would we ever go to the editor for if we don't have, if we don't know the course? Okay. Actually, the, the assignment does ask you to, right, in the assignment, in the Redux assignment, I believe the URL that, that we ask you to use for mapping it is what? Let's see. We ask you to use. Um, okay, the editor, All right, this one, right? This course layout, edit, course ID, right? Remember this? Okay. Um, so yeah, so, so we want to encode, we want to encode the course ID, and this is the URL we want to show. This is the URL. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to head over here, and now, right, I'm going to replace this with that URL. See that? Okay, obviously now I have broken my navigation to my, to my course editor, 
right? I've broken my navigation to the course editor, so I need to fix it. And so if I if I try so if I try to navigate back to my editor now, it's broken. Right? So now if I refresh, it's gone, right? Uh, so the URL actually is what? The URL is course ID. Right, so I, well, let me paste that. The URL is something like that. It has that path. Okay. Right? Where, where these colons are placeholders, placeholders, meaning it could be anything here. I could put anything I want. And for course ID, I could put anything I want. Right, it all it all maps to the same the same module, right? But these being variables, that means that I could send you different things, right? I, I here I could encode the fact that I came from a table or a grid, right? So that when you go back, I, I, I'm I'm able to go back to the right place. And the idea of the module, same thing, right? This this allows me to pass you as a parameter the the course that I, that uh, we want to display. Okay, so how do we how do we handle that? How do we handle that? Uh, okay, so one thing that uh, we, we can do is that because these are have a colon in front of them, because these are colon in front of them, we, we, we can, um, uh, as part of the routing mechanism, as part of the routing mechanism, what this will do is that it will parse the actual course. I mean, it will parse the actual uh, URL, right? And, and, then, and then map, the by place, right? The 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 actual value of layout, right? It will parse it out, and it will create a little, a, kind of like a little map, right? Create a little map. That oops, sorry. It'll create a little map. That um that will look something like this. It will it will be um layout, right? And the actual value that that uh, you 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 typed, right? This could be maybe grid. Right, and for course ID, the actual ID of the course. And I'll pass it to you as a parameter to you so that you can, you can read uh, all these things, okay? And where does it pass it to you? In the props, okay? All right, so let's try it out. Let's try this out, okay? So let's go back in the course editor. Now the course editor, the course editor, I notice that it's it's uh, it's reading uh, the history from the props that are being passed in. Okay. Another thing that is being passed inside of those props is the map that having parsed this. Right? So if we go here, we can also extract the parans, parans. Okay. Whatever that is. Right. It's the map. It's a map that route parses the actual path. Right, which your path, this is your actual path, right? Maybe you, you typed here grid right, and some ID. And we want to read those. We want to read that the layout is grid and that the course ID is one, two, three, four, something or other. Right, we want to read that. And how do we read it? Well, it passes us these, these parameters right here, params. Right? So how do we display the params? So here in the course editor, one of the things that we could do is say params, right, params, and then we can use, it's a map, it's a map. So the, the keys of that map are the properties, these, uh, these, these placeholders, right? So we can say layout, layout, uh, oops, uh, of undefined params. Is it not params? Um, history, params, blah, 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 blah. Uh, not history? Oh, let me see, params, blah, blah, blah. Um, Parans, why is that not loading? Of course, editor, da, 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 props, da, 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 course editor, props. And let me see what's coming in here first. Let's say here, am I using history? I am using history. So history is working. Uh, I can go back. So history is working, why not params? Hmm. Uh, one thing that I'd like to show you is that uh, you can, you, you know, if these, are, if these are JSON objects and you can display their entire content by using the following, which is great for debugging. Now you can do the following. You can open up a JSON, a JavaScript um, expression, 
you can use JSON. JSON is a built-in object that we've used before, right? For stringifying, right? Uh, and you can stringify, you can stringify the, uh, uh, for instance, you can stringify the history. Oh, that's not the one we want. There we go. Notice, notice that's the history. See that? That's the entire history. Location, hash, search. Okay. Um, and I see that it's not parsing in the search. It should have shown these here. It's not shown. Oh yeah, no. If you if you do this, right, you can also use this uh, to pass arguments. See the search right here? See search? That's another alternative, right, of passing parameters as a part of the query string. See that question mark afterwards? You can pass name value pairs, right? And they, they are passed in so that you can you can retrieve that, right? And then parse it if you if you want to pass arguments. That's not what I want to do. I want to display really not the history, but the params. Params, let's see. And params are not being parsed. Why are you not parsing the params? Uh, we can use something alternative to that. We can use uh, use params. Use params. Use params is a hook version of this. Is a hook version of this. Let me show it to you. If you look up um, React Router DOM. documentation, they give you hook versions of, uh, of all this um, parsing. Uh, hooks, hooks, where are the hooks? Oh, there it is. There they are, right here, the hooks, right? So for instance, instead of, instead of, using, instead of using this history, which is working, right? There's, there's no reason to change it. Um, uh, you, we could have used here a hook called use history. And use history allows you to read all the history. Same thing as use params allows you to use params. So let's try and use this instead of params. For now, I'm not sure why it's not working. Uh, so, so to use to use um, as, as we've seen before in use state that we, we used earlier, right? And we need to convert this into a full blown function, right? So let's create this and put this into a function. We'll need to wrap this in a parentheses. We need to wrap this whole thing in a parentheses. Okay. We'll need to wrap this inside of a return. Right, and this whole thing into a curly bracket. Okay, and the reason we're doing that, right, is because we want to do something, we want to do more than one thing, right? Before we were just doing the return, only the return. It was an implicit return, right? That's why this was working. But because we want to do something else more than just a return, right, we can, we can, um, we, in, in particular, what we want to do is use this. Um, this params, right? Here's the example, right? You you uh, import the the use params, right, from React Router DOM, which we just did, right? And then, and uh, the use params, you can read any any um any any uh, placeholder, any parameter, right, that you had put the colon in front of it. You can read it from the parameters. So here, for instance, is, is colon slug. Uh, you can retrieve that value from here. In our in our particular case. We want to parse what? We want to parse the layout and the course ID. So let's do that. All right. So here we're going to say that const const uh, layout layout. We're going to read it from use params, and we also want to retrieve not only the layout. We also want to retrieve the course ID. Course ID. And let's see if this works. I'm going to print out the layout over here, right? And I want to print out the course ID. All right, let's go back. There it is, right? So there's my, there's my layout that is being read from here from the, from the second uh, path element over here. And notice the uh, course ID is also being read right from the path. Okay, so, so, so that, that's one way that we can pass data, right, in the URL. And, uh, and now, how do we go from here? How do we go from here to here? Well, we need to modify our URLs. Right here in the URLs, right now, we're, we're 
linked to slash editor. See that down below? You can see it down here, right? If I click on it, notice we're navigating to slash editor, but really we want to navigate where? We want to navigate to something like this, right? So let's let's fix that. Let's fix this, right? So let's um, let's go back to the to the table, right? In the course row when we are where we are rendering that. Instead of navigating to slash editor, right? Really, we want to navigate to what? Something like that, right? Where we have the layout here, and we have the uh, the uh, the ID of the course here, right? Um, so how do we do that? Well, we want to we we have the course title, right? We have the course. Title. We also have the ID, don't we? We have the ID underscore ID, don't we? Let's go back. Yeah, so we have the the title, right? And we have the ID, so we can we can append that ID to the URL. So we could do the following. Right, so we want, we want to put the ID here, but how do we put the ID here? We could do like string concatenation, but that's very error prone, right? So instead, we're gonna use the following technique that we've used before, right? It's just templating, it's string templates, right? You just, you just grab this, right? You put it inside of a script and instead of an expression with curly brackets, okay? Uh, and we're gonna replace the double quotes, we're gonna replace it with back ticks, okay? So let's do that. So use back ticks, there we go, see that, it replaced them. And, and now we can put an expression here. We can say that we don't want this hard-coded uh, string for the course ID, instead we want to grab it from the course ID. Let's do that. And dollar sign bracket, and we're gonna say course dot underscore ID, right? Also, uh, here we are in the table uh, layout, right? So this course row is part of a bigger table. So this should be table over here, table. Make sense? And we don't need this course ID anymore. All right, so let's, let's go back and refresh this. So now if I click on this, notice that I navigate to my course editor and I'm passing the ID of the course. And here I have a table, right? right if, I, if I navigate to a different one, I get a different ID, but the same table, right? I would need to do the same thing for the grid, right? In the grid, I would need to also change the URL so that it, it navigates here and passes me the ID, right? Now, now that I have the ID though, I need to load the modules that are specific to that, uh, to that, to that course, right? Before we do that though, before we do that, um, let's now do the same thing, right? The, the same encoding that we just did, we wanted to do it for modules and lessons, right? So that if I click on different things here, right? Uh, right, right now they're not they're not encoded to anything, right? They're, they're just encoded to a slash, right? What I wanted to be able to do is, if as I click, as I click, I want to encode in the URL the actual module that you clicked on, right? So it's slightly different, it's slightly different the way we did it. Here we are navigating from from one from one component, right, we are replacing it with an entirely new component. Whereas here, as I click through the modules, right, I also want to encode it in the URL, but I don't want to go to a different component. I want to stay in the same course editor component. Does that make sense? All right, so let me show you. Right. So this module list, let's, let me, let's try and do the same thing we did navigating from the course, ed, from the course editor, uh, from the uh, course table, and we navigate it to the course editor. Now we're gonna navigate from the course editor to the course editor, right? But we wanna encode in the URL the ID, right? Of the module that I select. Okay, so let's do that. Let's try and do that. Right, so, so first of all, we need IDs for this guy here, right? So let's see, we're somewhere in our, um, in our reducer for the modules, right? I don't believe we have IDs. Oh yeah, we do have IDs. Perfect, excellent, we do have IDs. Excellent. So. So that means that in the in the course module, in the course module, um, we are rendering here in editable, in editable, uh, we are we have this link right now. Right now the link, right now the link is just what? It's just um, the title. It's only it's only displaying the title. Okay, it's only the title. Um, and uh, and who's who's passing this to me? 
right now it's this uh, this module list, right? It's passing this this um, this module for rendering. Now down here, I need to I need to create what? What I'm going to do here? What I'm going to do is that is that I want to click on this module list, and when I click on it, I want to keep the same URL, and just I want to append. Right, the fact that I am selecting a module, something like modules, right, slash, and then the ID of the module. Right, right now, if I do that and I enter, notice that I navigate nowhere because there's nothing mapped there, right? Okay, so I wanna stay in the same component and I wanna have that ID, right, encoded so that I can load the specific lessons for the selected module, right? Uh, so how do we do that? So what we're going to do is that we're going to say that uh, in the course ID, in the course editor, uh, I believe it's an app, in app, we're going to say that this loads the editor, but so does the uh, URL that has this, right? We want that too to load the same editor, right? We want, you know, because right, that's what I want. I want to be able to say slash modules slash some ID. I want to say in the course editor. See that? Right, right now it has like one or, or the other. It's one or the other, right? So what we're going to do is that we're going to, instead of this being a single string, instead of being a single string, what we're going to do is that we're going to make this an array. So that so that we're going to say is that if you get this URL or This, right? What we're going to do is that we're going to convert this into an expression, right? So it's curly bracket, and we're going to put this in an array, right? An array. There it is, right? So this, so this allows me to. This still works, right? Oops. Yeah, this still works like we had before, but now it allows me to add other paths, other paths that also navigate to the same course editor, right? One that file, one that is not only has the course ID, but now one that also has slash modules, slash module ID. See that? Okay, so if I'm, I'm here and I click on a particular course, uh, why do you write exact true in route? Uh, yeah, so so if you, if you, um, okay, so if you don't, if you don't do exact, then what it'll do is that it'll do pattern matching or partial match. Right, so, so for instance, anything that starts with this, for instance, uh, anything that starts with this, like this would also match, right? Um, because it starts with the same thing. So it, it does only partial matching, uh, where exact true uh, means that I want an exact match on the URL. And, and that allows you to do things that are nested inside of each other, uh, indefinitely nested. We could consider that. Um, I'd rather know exactly the pattern matching of the URL that I'm I'm, I'm rendering, uh, as opposed to knowing, you know, trying to do some partial matches. I've had you know, bad experiences with partial matches. <laughs> I, I, I always prefer to do my uh, exact match uh, so that I'm not guessing whether it's match or not. Uh, can you repeat the, the array does? Yeah, right. So so the what the array does, what the array does is that is that um, now, either one of these two URLs right, allow you to select, uh, render this particular component, right? Whether this URL, uh, oops, right? Basically, it allows you to create several options of the of multiple URLs that mapped to the same to the same component, right? So that is exactly what we want to do. We want we we want to render this when we have this URL, or if we have the following URL, we still want to render the same thing. Right? This one tells me this, this ID over here, this ID over here is going to drive this content. And this ID over here is going to drive this content, right? The lessons. See that? Right? So this will tell me which modules to load. And this will tell me which lessons to load. And later on, you know, on your own, right? For for the for this assignment, on your own, you're gonna do topics, right? And you're gonna encode the the I'm sorry, lesson lessons, right? When you click on a lesson, you want to load the topics for that lesson, 
right? So you're going to, as you click on the lesson, right? You're going to encode the ID of the lesson so that you know which topics to load. And that's going to drive the topics down below. And then notice right now it's not, it's not mapped to anything, right? So it doesn't display anything. Um, okay. So, um, okay. So we have the, the table and we, we want the modules, right? If we navigate to the modules. So, so let's, uh, let's go back to the course and let's, um, Let's make this a little, a little easier to read. Okay, we're gonna say, um, a, we're going to have here, um, j just for, for our sake, you know, to make sure that we have everything we need, right? So let's, let's uh, make a little list here. Make sure that we have everything we need. We have the layout. So we're gonna say layout. Uh, we're gonna have the course ID and why we want the module ID. And the module ID, we're gonna load it the same way we loaded the parameters, right? We're gonna say module ID. So these three, these three match the parameters that we're putting in there right here, right? The layout, the course ID, and the module ID. And they need to match exactly, okay? Because what the route is doing is that it's parsing the actual URL and it's, and it's uh, by placeholder, right? It's it's uh, parsing the actual value of layout, the actual value of course ID, the actual value of module ID, right? And then it's passing it to you, right? In the parameters, and then you can read, extract those parameters, and then here just the, I mean the uh, <laughs> this course ID. And this is module ID, there we go. So it's reading the course ID from right here and it's reading the module ID from right here. I notice that if we remove the modules from here, we only really get the course there is. So we only have to get the course. We don't have the, the ID for the modules. The modules, we're gonna encode them by clicking here. See that over here? Right. So let's do that. So where, how do we do this link? How do we do this link? Right now, this link is not, is not link to anything right now it's just slash okay so uh so in the editable item right now we're just saying item dot title item dot title okay now i don't know that because this editable right this editable is being used here and is used here and later on we'll use it for topics i don't think the editable item has enough information to build this url right you know we have to create that url right that's what we did in in the in the um, course row, right? We built this URL, we built it ourselves. I, I don't know that the editor has enough information to build that URL, right? But the parent does, right? Module list does, right? Module list has enough information, right? Um, uh, where is it? Um, actually the, um, the course editor, right? The course editor has enough information for, for that you know, to, to create that URL, okay? Um, actually, I, I, let me see. I should, I should be able to grab it from the module list. Let's do the same thing here. Let's create the module list so that we can parse the parameters from down here because here's where I want to create that, that link, right? That hyperlink, right? So let's, um, let's read this. Let's do the same thing we did here, right? We're gonna, we want, we want, we want these two things. Uh, we don't really need the link and we don't need the history. But we do want the params down way down here, right? So let's notice that. Remember, this here, this means that it's an implicit return, right? This is an implicit return, right? And if the if the only thing you're doing is returning this this uh this HTML, then you can use the syntax. But if you want to do more than just a return, right? Then you need to make an explicit return so that you can put more lines of code here, right? So we're gonna we're gonna convert this into a full Function. So I'm going to put a parenthesis in front of this. I'm going to put a return, right? And then this whole thing, I'm going to wrap it inside a curly bracket uh, here. There we go. Okay. And there we go. Okay. And the only reason we did that is so that we can do the same thing we did here. Just, just read the parameters. Right, right before our return. 
Okay. All right. Um, all right. So, well, um, let's see. Let's uh, let's let's see if we can retrieve that information. Right. Let's uh, let's let's move this out of here. Right. And let's move it down to the module list. Just I just want to make sure we have that information here. We do. Right. In the module list, we have the information, and so we can calculate what the URL should be for each one of these. Each one of these. Right. Each, these these links here. Right. So what what should it be? What should it be? Well, it should be this adding slash modules slash the ID of the module. Yes? All right. So, so let's copy that. Let me copy that. Uh, we can calculate the, the link. We can say that const the, the, the two of where we're going to navigate, right? You know, in the editor, in the editor, not in the editor, in the uh, editable items, we're saying, Link to, we want to calculate this right here, right? We're going to calculate that outside and we're going to pass it down to as a parameter so that we can, we can, uh, we can then render it here, okay? Uh, something like this. Uh, two will be what? It'll be that whole thing, right? Without this, right? So it'll be courses. Table will be what? The layout, it'll be the layout. Okay, edit, this will be the course ID. Right, this will be the course ID. Um, and what will be the, so the, mo the modules, just, just that, right? And then followed by the modules, but what module? It's the mod, as I'm iterating over this, right? As I'm iterating, so instead of, instead of computing this here, instead of computing this here, I can do that here, right? You can say two, it's an expression, right? And I'm passing two is course, the layout, the course ID, and then the module is a module I just, I'm just iterating over, right? So this would be module, module dot underscore ID. See that, right? Okay, so I'm passing this as an as a as a as a, a property down to editable, which I can now grab the item dot two. Here I can say this is item dot two. All right, let's see if this works. Let's hover over here. Okay, see down below here. So look look at down here. You can see the URL. So if I oh, hover over this, you'll see. Uh, slash table slash edit in the course ID. And what happened to my modules? Did I not put the modules? I did put the modules. Why is it not rendering the modules? Hmm. Wait, let's click on this. Let's see, edit. Uh, hmm, interesting. Why is it not editable item to Editable item to item two. Hmm. Oh, no, I just said two. I just called it two. Here, two. There we go. Uh, are we live in YouTube today? Oh, I did start YouTube. Sorry about that. Uh, I'll download the, the um, I'll download it from, um, a, uh, from uh, from Canvas and from Zoom, and I'll upload it and I'll add it to YouTube. Sorry about that. Yes, please remind me. Make sure that uh, I start the YouTube next time. All right, let's see. Let me hover over it. All right, now it works. See that? If I click on it, see over here. See modules two, three, four. Click on it. Modules three, four, five. See that? Right. There we go. Uh, let me let me do it one more time for you. Let me do it one more time. Let's do it for lessons. Let me do it for lessons. Right. Uh, we, what we're trying to do is encode enough information in the URL. Once we have that information, right? What what could we do? If we have the course that you selected, we could load this dynamically from the server as opposed to being hard coded in our in our in um, in in the reducer, right? Same thing here. If we know the module that you selected, I could load the lessons dynamically from the server instead of having a hard coded here in the reducer, right? So I'm going to do it for you one more time here in the lessons. Okay, 
What I want to do is that when I click on this lesson, I'm going to code here something that says slash lessons and then some lesson ID. Some lesson ID, right? So I'm going to grab that, grab the URL. So I'm going to do the same thing I just did. I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to say here that the yet another pattern that I want to stay in the same course editor. I want to stay in the same course editor, but I want to encode right this information in the URL, right? Is that has the following pattern. This here is the layout, right? Then the course ID, then the course ID, right? Then the modules ID, and then lesson ID. See that? Okay, right? Uh, so that means that that this over here now needs to follow that same the same pattern. I need to generate that pattern, right? So where do I do that? I do that in the lesson tabs. Let's go to the lesson tabs. We go to lesson tabs. Where is it? Okay. Let me convert this into a full-fledged function. All right. So I'm just going to put this in parentheses. I'm going to put a return, and I'm going to put the curly brackets around this. I'm going to put curly brackets around this. There we go. And the reason we do that is so that we can we can um, do one more line of code here. And we're gonna do this um, same thing we did for the module list. We're going to load the params. We use load the params right here so that we can load the our parameters, right? From the layer, the course ID and the module ID. I'm gonna copy them. Okay. And um, and and uh, and what else do we need? We need the oh, we need the lesson ID too, right? We need the lesson ID, lesson ID. Okay, uh, and here we can calculate the two. The two will be what? Very much like the like the um. It's, it's, this is the URL we want, right? So let's copy that. The two will look like that. Copy that. So we know that it needs to look, look something like that. So what's this going to be? The layout. So this will be the layout. This will be the course ID. This will be the module ID. Module ID. And this will be the lesson ID that we read. Lesson ID like that. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, if I hover over this, uh, ooh, uh, it's undefined. See, that's undefined. So maybe we didn't put IDs for the lesson. Let me see. In the in the uh, lesson reducer, uh, we do have IDs. Interesting. Why don't we have IDs? Oh, probably because in the lesson tabs. Yes, you're right. Thank you. This should be this should be lesson dot ID. Thank you. So lesson dot ID underscore ID. Okay, if I click on it, there we go. See that one, two, three. All right, two, three, four, three, four, five. Perfect. Excellent. All right, great. So you got it. All right. Okay. So now, now, so you'll notice that if I click here, I'll get a different module. Different module. See that? If I click on the lesson, I'll get. A different lesson for that lesson, and then, and then you know topics and whatnot. Yes. Uh, all right. So now we need to great. So we, we have we have that all done. Okay. Uh, we need to now you know connect this to the server so that the the modules that you load here are driven by this course, and the lessons that you you load here are driven by the module that you select, and then the topics that you load here will be driven by the Lesson that you select, right? So that you have you get this all nested mechanism, right? So let's let's first load modules for that particular course. Obviously, at first it's going to be empty because I have no modules for that course, right? Uh, so that's fine because we're gonna we have the plus here that's going to allow us to add a new module, which is going to be perfect. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's do that. Let's let's uh, let's load this. We'll need a service. We'll need a service to load this. And in the assignment, I have explained what that server service should look like you'll need a module service that was going to be able to create modules 
and find modules, right? Which is perfect. That's exactly what we need, right? Uh, so let's do that. Let's create in our service, uh, we had a course service. Look like that. So our module server is going to look very, very similar to this, right? Uh, the, 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 the difference is that uh, right, right now the courses are standalone, right? These, these courses exist outside of any scope. Well, within the Genunzi scope, right? These are my courses. Uh, but for modules, modules need to exist within the scope of a course, right? So how do we do that? So let's do that. Let's, let's create a new service. We'll say new. And we'll, this will be module uh, service. And we'll need the URL. The URL will look something like this. The URL will look something like this. I'm just going to copy this. OK. So I'm going to say uh, module. So this is the const module URL. It will be like that. It's a little bit too big. Uh, my NUID is Januzzi. Use yours, not mine. Uh, and um, actually, actually, we're going to append this. We're going to append this at the end when we, when we run this. So this is really courses URL. Courses, courses URL is going to be that, just that. Right? And we're going to append right, the ID of the course and the modules. All right. So, so we have that. Let's, uh, let's create. Uh, let's create fine modules for course, which at first is going to be empty, right? So export a const fine and it's going to do a fetch. It's going to do a fetch. Fetch. It's a get, so it's going to read, and it's going to be. It's going to use um, course URL. Course URL followed by slash the course ID, the course ID, the course ID, followed by modules. So what this is saying is that I want the modules under the context of this particular course, all right? I don't want all the modules. I want these specific modules for that course, all right? And then just uh, then response, and response.json. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. Let's uh, head over and try to use this. Let's try and use this. Where would we do this? Where would we do this? We would do this when we're loading the modules. When we're loading the modules, when we load the modules, we want to trigger, right, that we just loaded and we want to uh, hit the server with this. So, how do we do that? We need, to, we need to be notified somehow that we are you know, just now loading into memory, right? And it's a good time to go fetch all this data, right? Fetch all this data. And that data needs to go where? It needs to go into the module reducer. So this module reducer, this module reducer, somehow it needs to be notified that there was an event that should um, tell me what the modules are that loaded so I can override my, this hard-coded list of array, of, of array of modules, right? I don't want this hard-coded array of modules. I want the ones in the server. So how do we do that? So how do we do that? Okay, this is going to be tricky, right? So what we're going to do is that um, just like we use these, these hooks, we need, we need a way of being notified, right, that there was some kind of side effect, right, that, um, that, that we are just loading right now. Okay, so, so how do we do that? Well, there is, a, there is a hook that allows us to be notified that we're just loading up, right? Typically we would do that either in the constructor or in the componented mount, okay? But we can't use componented mount because we're not a class. We're not a class and yeah, we, we're, we're kind of stuck there. And, uh, and we don't have a constructor either. So how do we do this? So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use a, a hook, another hook, that allows us to be notified that we just loaded. Okay, and that hook is called use effect. Okay, effect like that. Okay, and uh, what does use params? Do? Uh, use params. Use params. Uh, the question. There's a question on the chat. Says what does use params do? 
Yeah, so use params, remember in apps, right, we are, we are uh, creating these routes. We're creating these routes and we, um, we're asking the route to parse this, right, from the, from the path right, and then provide us those values to us. And the way we do it is using use params. Your use params says parse, parse the URL, parse the URL, and give me the values of all these guys. Okay, and given to me in a map where these are the keys to that map. And then the values are whatever values are in the actual, uh, the actual path. And it says, uh, now that we've added so many hooks to the stateless function, so that it could have states, why don't we just use the stateful classes? So we're not maintaining any state, right? We're not maintaining any state, right? The state is being maintained by the URL. So this, the, 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 uh, the, the function itself is not maintaining any state. The state is being maintained by the, uh, by the Redux uh, state, right? It's being passed to us right here, right? It's not, it's not, we're not maintaining it. It's being passed in as a parameter. Uh, we need to modify, notify the, the uh, you know, just like we have these event handlers that we click, right? And that we want to create a module, we want to delete a module. We don't do that, right? We, we tell the state manager to do it, right? We just, we just notify them of different events that occur. Same thing here. We want to notify it that, hey, we just loaded. I don't have any state. You know, go fetch me a state and then pass it to me, okay? So we're going to just notify the reducer that, Hey, I just loaded. I need state. You know, send, get me some state, right? So we're not going to do anything. Ever. Right? If it's something contained, uh, something that is you know, you know, a modular, that it's not spreading out to the rest of the uh, uh, the application, that's fine, right? You could you could create a small little state and that's it, right? Um, all right. So so let's uh, let's do this. So in the in the use effect, we can. So you can you can take a look at the examples of uh, of the use effect. We take a look at React uh, use effect in um, hook um, documentation. I include read up on their on the API, and basically it's a it's a function. It's a function that will be called or invoked right when when your component loads, right? It's almost basically doing the same thing that a um, component did mount does, right? And so this function gets called and in there would be a perfect time to notify you know, that, that, hey, I need, I need state, right? So let's do that. So use effect, okay, use effect, right? It takes a function, right? That is invoked, right? When this loads. So what do we wanna do here? We want to, we want to notify the, the uh, reducer that this is a good time to go fetch state, okay? So, so the way we're gonna notify the, uh, the, the, the way we're gonna notify the reducer is that we're gonna call a, a function, find modules for course, right? Uh, again, we're not going to do it, but we need to notify the reducer that this is a good time to fetch state, right? And we're going to do it by notifying the reducer over here. So we're going to call find modules for course, right? For which course? Well, it's being passed to me as a parameter. It's being passed to me as a parameter, right? Well, first of all, let's make sure that we have the parameter here. Let's make sure that we have the parameter. So in here, we will do console log course ID. Let's make sure that we have that in here. Let's uh, let's reload this and let's look at the parameters on the on the right hand side. Uh, let's um, let's not do this. Where to go? Put this on the right hand side. Uh, uh, where where is it? Um, where to go? Oh, is it is it in this in this window maybe? DevTools here. Uh, where to go? Okay, here. Let me put this right there. Okay, now you can see it. Okay, you can see the screen, right? You can see the DevTools on the right hand side. 
Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's do a console. And uh, let's see. Do we have um, a warning? Each child. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, it's complaining about module list. That one's okay. I guess we should fix that. Uh, I'm looking for ID. There it is. Yeah. So we have the course ID right there, right? Module list line 16. Yes, we have the course ID. All right. So perfect. We can notify the reducer that it's a good time to go fetch state for that particular course, right? So he's giving me that that function again, a mapper, right? So let's uh, let's create a mapper. So here's the the this dispatch to property mapper, right? There it is, and we have the course ID, okay? And uh, so this is where I want to go fetch data, right? So let's let's make sure that we can. Uh, we can do we can do a, a we're here make sure that we're here and we have that course id console you know fetch fetch courses uh modules fetch modules modules for course right and let's make sure that we have the course id uh, console there it is right fetch modules for course okay so who can do that for us well, we just created a service that can that can do that for us. Don't no, no right here module service. So we need to import this this uh, service. Let's import it right here and say import find modules for course from that service, and we want to call it from here. We want to call it from here. Find modules from courses, and we pass the course ID and. And then presumably this would be the modules, the actual modules. Let's do console log modules from the server. And let's see, um, courses, blah, 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 blah. It says not found. Oops. Um, courses, let's see the network. It didn't like it. What didn't you like? Let's see. Slash. Let's in there. Um, let's take out course ID. Okay, I think let's take out that slash here. Let's try it again. Okay, modules. All right, at least now it's coming back as empty, right? And at least now it's coming back as empty. It's not, it's not dying on me. Um, but yeah, so I, I have the data here. I have the data in the module list. I have the module. It's empty right now. That's okay. It's, it's empty, but that doesn't matter. I can now call my dispatch. We can call my dispatch here. I can say dispatch, uh, the, the, I am going to send you a, uh, an action whose type, I'm gonna call it find modules, find modules for course. Right, and I'm gonna pass you the modules. I'm gonna pass you the modules. Ooh, I, I, I forgot to put the parentheses here. I'm gonna say modules, colon modules. Yes? Okay. So that means that I am calling you the reducer, the modules reducer. Back in the modules reducer, I need to handle that new case. The new case is is that string find modules for course, okay? And the new state is gonna be what? The new state is going to be the old state, right? But I am going to override the modules. The modules is going to be what? The modules that came from the server that I put them where? I put them in the action object in an attribute called modules. So in the action object, in an attribute called modules. Okay. So now if I go here, notice that it's empty. I have no modules because that's, you know, that makes sense. That's exactly what's, oh, I, have, I, I think I'm, I'm in an infinite loop. <laughs> I, I got into an infinite loop. Uh, let me close that. All right, so I'm getting into an infinite loop 
I'm getting into an infinite loop because now I'm setting the state. I'm setting the state. And when I set the state, this, this module component gets rendered again, gets rendered again. And, and so it, it finds, it goes and fetches again from the server, which sets the state and it renders this again and it re-triggers this session event. So I need to stop it somewhere. I need to stop it, okay? And the way you stop it, right, the, this endless loop, is that, is that um, you do it by adding this uh, square brackets at the end. And which says, right, that this bracket in the end says that only if the following things change, do this, okay? And, um, and, the, and, and I'm gonna leave it empty for now. I'm gonna leave it empty for now. And, and at first, there's nothing, so it did change. You know, it's nothing compared to something. You know, I went to fetch something. And, and so when, so next time you come around here, it hasn't changed, the state hasn't changed. So it stops the infinite loop. So let's see if indeed, uh, if indeed, if it did work, table. Let's, uh, let's inspect, make sure that we're not in an infinite loop again. Network. Okay, notice that, that we, we, we go to fetch the modules only once. It was in an endless loop, fetching modules, fetching modules, fetching modules. Uh, I don't wanna crash my server. All right, so, so let's see. Uh, so, so we were able to fetch the modules for a course. Obviously there are no modules because it's a brand new course, right? And uh, let's, let's try and create, let's create a module, right? Let's create a module for the current course that we have. Okay, so let's do that. So it's um, in, the, in the service, right? We need to create a module. I'm gonna copy it from my assignment. And from the assignment, it says that it should be called create module. There it is. And, uh, and I'm gonna put it right here. So that export const, there we go. Right, so it's gonna be a fetch, almost identical than before. But instead of a get, this is a default get, right? We want this to be a post. Right? So this is going to be a, a method is gonna be post, right? We're gonna put in the body we are going to do that the content type, right? It's just JSON application.json, okay? And this is gonna return the actual object that came back from the server, right? Okay, so if we have that, we're going to bring that as well here. We say create module. So now when we, when we create the module, here's my create module. Here's my create module, right? And it's gonna be invoked by who? When I click on it, when I click on it, is it's coming here, right here, okay? So right now it's just going and adding a dummy object in that array, right? In the, in the hardcoded array. Instead, what I wanna do is first go out to the server, create a new, a new uh, course. And then when it comes back, right? I, I want to pass that new course that was just added to the server. I wanna pass it to dispatch and say, hey, this is the course I want you to add. Not a dummy course that you, you're adding uh, in, your, in, in the reducer, right? I wanna add it right here, okay? So here, uh, I need to know for what course, because the course is different depending on which course you select it. So at, at least I need to pass in the course ID as an, as an argument here, right? So where, do, where can we pass that from? I can pass it from, the, from, this, from this button when I click on it, right? Right, I can, I, I, by careful, right? If I, I have the course ID here, right? I'm, as a, as a you know, pass as a parameter. So I can pass it here. I can pass it, but careful, if I'm gonna pass something here, I need to wrap this, I need to wrap it like that, right? Otherwise I'm gonna go end up in an endless loop. So this is gonna be course ID, I'm gonna pass the course ID. Let's make sure that we have this. We're gonna say alert course ID, okay? Let's see, make sure we have that. And so if I click on it, there we go. So we are passing that ID. Notice that it ends up with FDD, right? If I have a different course here and I click on plus, notice that it's something else. It's AEF AE02. So we have the course ID. We have the course ID. 
uh, we want to call our service, our course, uh, create course, create course, mo uh, create module, which is a course ID, right? This takes us argument the course ID and a module, some dummy module, some dummy module. And I'm gonna pass it right here. The dummy module, I'm just gonna say the title is just gonna be some uh, new module. I'm not gonna pass an ID for the module because it's a brand new module. I don't know what the ID is. The server is gonna create a, the ID for me. And this is gonna come back with the actual module that I'm gonna create for that course. All right, so then this is the new module. And I'm just gonna do console log uh, module, okay? So let's see what that does. All right, let's remove this alert. Okay, so I'm gonna refresh this. I'm gonna do a console. I'm just gonna click here. Okay, so this is the module that was created in the server, right, in the server. And, um, and so it's called new module, blah, blah, blah. Right, the, the, the brand new ID. Notice that if I refresh now, if I refresh, it didn't work. Wait, what? <laughs> should have loaded the modules for this course. Why didn't it load network modules? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it did load them. Why didn't it render modules? That's the module we just created. Mm, modules, the courses. Uh, oh, it doesn't have the title. Why well, doesn't have the title? Uh, header, so it was a, it was a get. Um, misspell the title? Well, I mean, yes, I did misspell the title, but it should have, you know, it should have come back with a with an empty. Oh, that okay, it is right there. It is rendering. <laughs> you're right. I misspelled the title. That's why it's, it's a. Yeah, you're right. So if I if I create a new one, and I refresh. Notice that this still misspells. Um, why are you not network modules? Is the title even coming back? No, the ID, the title is not even coming back. Why are you not? Uh, domain ID courses, why? There's my mod. And string define module body method post body header application JSON modules. Why are you not creating my titles? Create module. Create module. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's put a breakpoint right here. Put a breakpoint. Let's create another one. So let's create class. Source, the breakpoint would be right here. Create. Let's see, plus. There it is. Force ID. Okay. And let's step in. Let's step in into this. Let's step out. There we go. Let's step in. Okay. And module. There's a title. Hmm. That seems to work. And there is a post, JSON module. And let's continue. Let's continue. Let's look at the network. Let's see what we sent. The headers, it's a post. And we are sending the title. Interesting. So we are passing the right data. Uh, could it be a bug? on the server side yeah no my, my server whatever you pass in um you know any 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 attributes that you pass in uh, they get passed in verbatim right so you can put you know just xyz it doesn't it doesn't really care what you put in there so it should have it should have added any attributes that you pass in all right fine i'll, I'll take a look at why that's the case uh, in any case notice that um that that um we're we're not we're we're not uh, when we say plus right that new a new course it should display here right now it's displaying for the wrong reasons the reason it's displaying there not because not because it's a 
um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure that the module that comes back from the server, right, we add it to the current state, right? And we pass it along here in dispatch, right? So let's, let's make sure we do that, make we do that. So here, when we create it, here is when we want to pass the new module into the dispatch, right? So this dispatch, we want it to execute after it comes back from the server, after it comes back from the server, Right, that we have a notification that we have indeed created the module in the server. And then we can pass that new module down to the, to the reducer, down to the reducer saying, hey, this is the actual module we just added, right? So that in the reducer, instead of, instead of uh, creating this module here, this new module, we don't need this, right? We don't want to create it here because it has already been created in the, in, the, in the server, right? So we're gonna delete this. And instead, this new module is really the action that module, right? This is the new module that we've added that's coming back from the server that currently has the wrong title for some reason, <laughs> okay? Right, so now if we refresh, right? And we create, notice that um, it's here, we continue. Uh, and there it is. Notice that it's missing the title for some reason. It's missing the title, missing the title. But if we refresh, it's being added. They're being added, right? But we just need to fix why the title is not working. Um, so anyway, I will fix. I will uh, debug this. Uh, let's see. How, do I have another 15 minutes? I do, right? Uh, let's see. Okay, good. I have another 15 minutes, so we can we can take a look at this. Let's let's fix let's fix um let's now work on the editing part, right? We want to edit. Okay. Well, no, before we before we edit, before we edit, let's first work on being able to delete, right? Before if I if I want to delete it, right? So same thing, right? We want to make sure right now we're deleting the module. Right now we're deleting the module here, right here, which is okay, but we need to delete it from the server. Right? So how do we delete it from the server? So we're gonna go to the module service. First, let's fix something here. Notice, notice that in the code for our module list, notice that what we're doing here, right? We're calling this. This module, and we hate module here, yes? Okay. This is clear, right? This, this property maps to this property right here. See that? But this function right here, the create module, is a little bit, um, it's a little bit ambiguous, right? It, it almost looks like this is a, a, um, a recursive call, right? And so it could get confusing. It could get confusing. So, you know, to make sure we're not confused that, you know, which create module are you talking about, right? It's a good practice that in the service, um, instead of, or in addition to exporting each of these individually, uh, is uh, we, we should instead, or additionally, create a constant that we can export a map. We can export a map with all these guys right here, declared here, declared and as a default, default, uh, export uh, const uh, equal uh, where export default const. I forget the attribute uh, or default API. I'm missing something here. Const API export default API. Okay, there we go. Right. So, so now, right. What I can do is that instead of instead of, of um, importing it like this, which creates the confusion down below, I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to comment this out, and instead, I'm going to import from the services. I'm going to call it the module service from right services slash module service. Okay. Right. What that allows me to do is now I can treat, I can call these these functions, create module. I can prepend, right, the, the 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 name of the service in front of this, so that now it's not confusing anymore, right? That this function lives inside of the service, 
right, that it's not inside here, right? Uh, should the header type create an application JSON? No, that might be, well, isn't that what we used? Isn't that what we used? Uh, application, oh, oh, I mistyped that. Yes, that's a good catch. <laughs> Okay, let's try it again. Let's click on it. Yay, refresh. There we go. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, um, my our colleague in, in the chat caught this uh, this error. Uh, instead of being dash, it's slash, not dash. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's work on deleting. Right? Let's work on deleting. So how do we how do how does delete work? We have this delete over here, right? We have this, this delete button, delete item, which uh, calls this delete module, which calls this delete module over here, right? And um, passes the module to delete. Oh, did I not, am I not passing anything? Delete module, delete module is this delete module, which is passing the ID, I believe, no? Oh no, it's, it passes the actual object to delete, right? The actual object. So this is the actual object that's being deleted. All right, the module to delete. Okay, all right, so what we're gonna do is that we know the ID is in there, right? We're going to try and send a delete message to the server, passing the ID of the module that we want to delete, right? And then the, the server is gonna come back with a status saying that which was successful or not, right? So let's, let's write that in the service. Let's write that in the service and it's gonna look somewhat like this. So let's copy this here. We'll call this delete module, delete module. Now, instead of, instead of being this course, I, it courses URL, remember in the, in the assignment, we said that for, for these two, for these two, this is the URL pattern that you're using, but for these two, I'm sorry, for these two, this is the URL that you're, that you're using Whereas for these three down here, we're gonna use this, this URL, right? So I'm gonna grab that and, and I'm gonna create it in a different constant. I'm gonna call it uh, modules URL. And it's gonna be something like this, modules. And then my, my user and user ID is just Janunzi. Okay, so now I can implement my URL. Pass it in there, and I don't need this anymore. So that's the that's the URL that I'm using, and this is a delete. A delete. This is a method. It's just delete. Okay, and this is going to be a status telling me whether I was successful or not. And so I'm going to expose export this as well, so that everybody can use it using the module service. So I can go back to my module list, and now before I go out to this to the user interface and the reducer to remove the module, I'm first gonna remove it from the, from the server. And then I can notify the, the, uh, my reducer that has been successfully removed, right? So I can say uh, module service dot delete module. I need the module ID, which is inside of the module to be deleted, the ID. Okay, I'm gonna come back with the status saying whether I was successful or not. And then I can notify I can notify the reducer that I have successfully removed the uh, the module from the server, and now it's okay to remove it from the reducer as well, right? Okay. Notice that if I leave it outside, right, then I could get into some race conditions on that I was maybe unsuccessful from removing from the server, but I was successful removing from the UI, right? And so now they're not synchronized. And so now let's let's see, uh, let's see if this worked. Refresh, let's remove some of these. Let's remove that one. Let's see if that worked. Console. Uh, network. Okay, so it looks like we removed. Delete, notice that it came back as yes, successful. Let's refresh. Let's remove just a couple more. Delete, let's remove a whole bunch of these. Remove some of these. I'll leave it up to you to fix the, there's a slight bug in there on the, on the state being not being updated, but notice that it is deleting them. Okay. All right, so I'm only left with my new, uh, new module. 
okay? Finally, update. I finally, update. So how do I update? So the update uh, will look something similar, right? We, in the, in the service, it looks something like the post, like this create module, uh, but it's gonna be update module, right? Update module, update module. It's gonna take the, the module ID that we wanna update and the new module uh, data that we want to uh, modify, right? Now this is gonna be directly to the module URL as opposed to the course because I wanna modify the module regardless what course it belongs to, right? So I wanna modify that module. It's gonna be a put and the new module data is in there. And this is gonna come back as a status telling me whether it was successful or not, right? Uh, and I'm gonna export this, my API. All right, so that when I go back to module list, here's my uh, my update, right? The update calls my update here with a new item, the new, new data, uh, which has the ID of the module, plus it's got the actual data of the module. So I can call my module service and call my module service dot update module. I have the ID in the new item, right, the ID. And I have the actual data in the new item, right? This is gonna come back as a status, whether it was successful or not, right? And then I can call the dispatch, right? And notify the reducer that it was successful to update with the new item, okay? Um, all right, let's try it out, see if this uh, explodes. Uh, so this is, um, Let's create a couple more. Let's refresh and let's update this. And this would be, you know, module one. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that worked. <laughs> let's refresh. Uh, I guess it didn't work. Let's see if we get an error. Uh, let's see, let's up, update that. So module one, two, three. Let's see if it creates the put here. Okay. Oh, pending, something went wrong. Let's see, uh, headers. Let's see, we're going to modules to, oh, these, all these ideas are bogus IDs. Line mod four, that ID doesn't work. Why, uh, why is it using the old IDs? Mm. Module, so all those module IDs are correct. Why are we sending the wrong IDs? So update. Oh, now it works. What, maybe I hadn't refreshed? What's going on here? Let me see. Okay. No, that didn't work. It's okay. That one is using the wrong IDs, but this one is using the correct IDs. Interesting. So that is the correct ID. Why are these? The, are these old? Oh, maybe these are the old modules that I had in there that are still being refresh. Okay, I create a brand new one. It has that ID. Let me edit that. Okay, okay, that worked. I think I had like a mixture of old modules in there. So module one, two, three, four, say okay. Okay, that seems to work. All right, yeah, so it works, right? Um, yeah, so, so we've shown you that we can do all the create, the updates and delete. Notice that if I go to a different course, so I, I, what course was that? Oh no, I forget what course it was. Okay, so this one, let's create modules. Uh, let's create modules, uh, module A, and we we'll create here module, module, I can't spell, BBB, okay. If we go back to some other mod course, we'll, we, we won't have any modules. We only have modules for that course. Right? If we go to another module, let's create you know, three modules here. 
and this will be maybe you know, one, two, three, and this will be one, two, three, four, three, four, five, okay, okay. If I go back, notice that this one gets module A, B, C, right, where this one gets module one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, see that? So now the modules exist within the context of the course that you select, right? And you, do, and you, and you update and you um, read and all this, right? Within that context. Now we need to do the same thing for the lessons, right? And that's what we're gonna do in the, in the next lecture, right? Uh, the, it's gonna be very, very similar. The only difference is that here we wanna stay in the same contain, in the same component. Whereas in the previous one, uh, we, want, we want to, uh, we want to we want to navigate from one component to the other, right? So the technique is slightly different, okay, and and so it's going to be slightly different in the way we work with the use effect, okay? Uh, because in the in the in the one we did here, we are doing an entirely reloading the entire component from scratch, whereas the other one we're not reloading the, the entire component, right? We only we're only uh, changing certain properties, but we do want to reload the data from the server. Right, when there's changes in the property. So we'll do that next time around, okay? All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, could you please download the lecture and post it? Yes, I will do that right now, thank you. All right, thank you, everyone, bye. And if you're following on YouTube, please uh, like the video, all right? Thank you.